Hi everyone, this is the first sword review on this channel. I'm gonna talk about this great sword, what I love about it and why I'm selling it anyway. This is the Black Fensex Scout Arming Sword. It's part of their Steel Generation line. They released this sword last year in June and I've ordered it pretty much immediately. I've got it in around 10 weeks time, which is what they advertised anyway. I haven't really used this sword too much, how you can mind how 2020 went, but I did try it out and we tested out a bit more in our school. I'm not sure how popular this sword is, I have only seen a couple of videos of people using it, and arming swords are not very popular anyway. But if you are using it on a daily basis, do let me know down in the comments. Starting with some specification and measurements, I have to say that mine is pretty much the same as the one presented on the website. It is slightly longer without this being really an issue. And the blade is pretty much the same. I find this blade length to be pretty good for both wide distance and close play, so you can generally disengage pretty quickly with it. The weight is close to the one specified in the website, and the point of balance is the same. It is solid enough for you to have authority in the bind, and can help with the displacement of the opponent's swords. The handle's length is quite good, it's a bit longer than some, but allows you all kinds of grips you may want here and here, if you want this, here, even you can try this, although you really shouldn't. We've tested the sword with red dragon gloves, with button gloves and even with the space heavies and there seems to be no issue with them working with either of the gloves, those are the L variants. The guard is decent size and looks proportional to the overall sword. For those of you who know about old shot classification, the pomo is type I with a bit of K in it, the guard is pretty much type 1 and the blade is something between type 15 and type 18, as far as one can classify a blunt anyway. If you compare the Black Fencer Scout to the Regine i33, which is much more of a type 15, you can definitely see the Scout is wider and the percussion is further away from the handle, almost exactly at two thirds of the blade. The Scout is actually wider all the way starting from the base. Here comes the reason why I really like this sword. It's not too light that a strong fencer would just wave it around and it's not so heavy that you won't be able to stop yourself mid-swing. It's difficult to explain exactly how a sword handles to a video, but I would put it right in the middle so it's not too heavy, it's not too light. You can feel it's solid enough to feel the presence in the bind. It definitely is less maneuverable than the Regine's i33 but it doesn't hit as hard as an Albion i33, so it's a good middle ground. As far as handling goes, it even has a bit of the feeling I have with my sharp Albion Poitier. Of course the handling is not the same, but you can't really compare it. Although. It is nice to have a bit of the same presence, just a bit. This is as much as I can tell you about handling it without you having to feel it yourself. But what I can tell you about are some other properties of the sword. The finish is generally well done. It is not mirrored and it shouldn't be anyway. It is uniformly made and quite enough for what it is. There are build quality issues though. I'm not too happy with the way the edge is finished. It's a bit sharp for me, it's almost at a right angle and this definitely leads to more damage to the blade after every single hit, even if they are a bit smaller, you can definitely see the damage that this does. For the purpose of this video, I decided not to clean the damage from the last test run we ran with it. Even minor binds leave it dinted and scratched and whenever you use it in sparring, especially in sword and buckler, you can definitely see it's more damaged than the other swords like Regine swords. This is my biggest complaint with the sword, it's just way too soft. I can't be sure if this is an anomaly, but from my work with other Black Panther swords, 
I'm pretty sure that they're simply softer than the Reagan A1s. And not even to mention how they would perform against an Albion that generally chews to anything. Unfortunately, this sword has another issue as well. I have used it in barely a few sparring sessions and the guard already started rattling. Yeah, pretty much all guards start to do it at some point, but not so quickly. It really shouldn't happen like that. Another minor inconvenience is that the handles started showing wear at the very first sparring session with the Red Dragon gloves. Minor but visible. The minor damage on the handle and the movement of the guard is not much of an issue and I otherwise like the way they are made, but you should have this in mind anyway. And the guard rattling was noticed in the Type 14 as well. What they do have as a benefit against most other swords on the market is the excellent tip. It's wide and thick and you can easily push even a bare hand with no issue. I see no reason for it to break any more than any other part of the blade, nor to be able to penetrate any kind of quality equipment. This is the type of tip that I would like most other manufacturers to adopt. It's so good for your opponents as well. It gives you more peace of mind when you manage to put it against your training partner's body or head. And we've also tested thrusts with it compared to other one-handed swords. You can see that it bends pretty decently and more interesting, it bends to its entire length, not just the second half or the last third as most other swords do. And finally, why I'm selling this sword even though I really like it? I simply can't find a good use for it currently. Everyone in our school is armed with the Regenes R33 and they are great, they are our default sort, so I play with them pretty much always. And for those of us who have Albion swords, well, when we play with Albion swords, I play with an Albion as well, so no use for this one. I do still think it's generally a good sort, and if you want to get it for yourself, you can do it from Black Fencer's website and expect to get it delivered within Europe in a couple of months. For the US, as far as I know, South Coast Swords are a distributor. There may be others and I don't know how long it takes for them to get it delivered, but you can check for yourself. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you enjoyed it, do give me a like so I could get this channel somewhere and subscribe for further HEMA content. If you want me to do more reviews, I have a lot more swords and gear that I can take a look at. This is for today, see you again later.